I always used like a I'm trying to think of the right way to put it like a destruction of language. I'm, I suffer from dyslexia myself. Language is a barrier for me. I'm very, um, I'm very verbal, I'm very expressive, but I also misuse language. I have trouble with syntax. I can't speak or read a foreign language because I have enough trouble putting it together with this language. So written communication has always held this tremendous fascination for me. So a way to make it express myself is to take language and objectify it. So what I have done basically since, I don't know, since the 70s, I've been working with suggestions of writing. When I did my wax paintings, those all kind of read from left to right, like kind of ghost markings. After I left the wax paintings behind, then I started working with extrusion using like a, a pastry tube. And I did a number of paintings that were just uh, markings. Working, always work with a grid, always work with a formal structure. And little by little, uh, real language was creeping into them. Uh, I started to, uh, like, I would take lots of different languages and abstract them. If I saw something written on a wall, I would copy it down and I would start assimilating those into surface texture. And then um, I had experimented with doing an all over pattern or like working from inside out in a square within a square. And my mom, when she had a, a stroke in, uh, that, that's like, I can't even remember how many years ago it was, I kept a journal in the hospital. And in the journal, I wrote everything that happened to her as a personal remembrance. And I used those journals to make a series of paintings, which are, uh, they're titled MMS1, MMS2, MMS3, so on and so forth, where my dealer at the time thought that this meant multimedia square one, multimedia square two, which is fine, but really what it was, my mother's stroke one, my mother's stroke two. And I found the experience of copying written text that had very deep personal significance for me to be um, not only therapeutic, but it was very meditative, very moving. It was quite an emotional experience for me when I made those paintings. I would be weeping while I was writing the paintings. And they're really, uh, it changed my whole, my whole focus on the texture and what to do with language the distortion of the language and presenting it as object. And I moved on from those into doing paintings that had other meaningful texts to me. It might be, it might be lyrics, it might be uh, a rant. I have a painting that's in a uh, public collection that was called Seeing Red. So not only was it a big red painting, which was 80 by 72 inches, it was a rant. It was a, a rant about the politics at the time. And I got that all out of my system in this painting. It's not legible, my handwriting is terrible, but it was a dis I was able to distort the language, express myself in a way that is a, a, a barrier for me to express myself normally, and use that as something that became full of light and texture. And I guess for the past, hmm, I think it's at least six years I've been involved in transcribing all of Allen Ginsberg's poetry and prose from 1947 to 19... I think I would remember, right? This is part of how I can't remember anything. I was doing his collected poetry, his collected poem, 1947 to 1980. And that forms my surface texture. I had a, uh, a personal um, tie to Allen. He influenced my, my life in many ways, as you know, a lot of people my age. Um, Howl was the first thing that I started transcribing. Then I did a piece called uh, Kaddish, which also had personal significance to me. And then I realized I could go in and I should do all of his work. And to me, Alan was a very uh, troubled, very dark, um, very pained person who really never had any tremendous happiness in his personal life. So transcribing his work, even though it's distorted and only I can read it, 
I feel like I've given this um, this this man's art uh, that I have infused it with light and color and gaiety and and just this is a different type of passion. And then for me as the artist, I'm having this very meditative experience rereading all of this poetry that I hadn't read again for a long time. So I'm doing his and then I just did um, a project with my daughter who turns out is a rapper. And when I heard her rap for the first time, I asked her if I could have some transcripts, which she produced. And these two paintings are transcriptions of her work, of her poetry. So I took a, a little break there from Alan, but I'm still, I still have a long way to go before I use up his, his prose for my, for my purposes. But I also do things from Lawrence Ferlinghetti and maybe lyrics from songs that have personal meaning. And at some point, I, the work will change. There'll be, there'll be something else that will evolve and move forward. But I don't imagine that it will never have something to do, it will never not have something to do with language and the distortion of language. <laughs>